Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's get started. The shooting and death of Micaiah Bryant. Now, of course, I'm going to come at this at a few angles, from a few different angles as I do. First off, <clears throat> it's a sad situation that a young girl was killed. Uh, you hate to see that happen. So, uh, yeah, bottom line, it's sad. It's sad, and uh, you hate to see someone so young get killed, especially a young girl. I mean, of course, we don't like to see young men get killed either, but uh, it kind of hits differently when you see a young girl get killed because they're more of the feminine vibration, feminine energy. <clears throat> Not so, uh, we don't, we don't want to attach it to aggressiveness or masculinity. And we know what happens with masculinity and aggressiveness, stuff happens, people get killed, people get hurt. So we kind of uh, accept that easier. Uh, and that kind of goes or segues into uh, an angle I want to come in regards to this, this topic. Micaiah Bryant and her, her shooting and her death. From the video, well, first off, uh, the first video that was uh, published, it was edited, it wasn't complete, and it had people in the uproar. And that's what the media wants, that's what uh, BLM wants. So they edited the video and didn't give the full context of what went on. Now, from what reports say, uh, Micaiah had gotten into it uh, with some young ladies. Uh, I don't know what it was about, but uh, they got into it like young people do, get into it. The young ladies came to Micaiah's residence. Micaiah's a foster child, and uh, they came to the foster home where she stays. Somewhere uh, with an altercation or disagreement, Micaiah calls the police. Now, I don't know if she called the police while she was outside or she went inside the house to call the police, but she called the police. The police arrives and it's in full escalation mode by then. Uh, the girls are fighting. You see some adults around, standing around, not really breaking it up, which is a problem. And uh, Micaiah's on the ground. I, I see a man kick her in the head. And so, that, you know, that's just uh, unacceptable. So it's, it's mayhem going on, right? <clears throat> N-I-G-G-A stuff, right? So at some point, uh, Micaiah has a knife. Not sure where she retrieved the knife, but she has a knife. The police is on the scene. She lunges at a young lady, a young girl, and an officer discharges a few bullets inside of her, four bullets to be exact. Now, let me go back into the edited video that the media put out and had people in the uproar. This is what they want. So, and I can preach this until, until the cows come home, but you gotta be slow to speak, slow to anger, quick to listen, quick to read. And you can't just pay attention to what you hear. You gotta pay attention to what you don't hear. You gotta pay attention to what is not being said. And just take your time once again, like I always say, be balanced and let it unfold. Sure enough, what unfolded was the editor video did not show Micaiah lunging at the girl with a knife. Now, when we saw the full video, unedited video, it shows her lunging at the girl with the knife. The officer did the right thing. It's unfortunate, you know, I don't know who started the fight. Just because Micaiah called the police doesn't mean 
she didn't start the fight. We can assume that, but we don't know. We've been in situations where people call call wolf, holler wolf, and, and uh, they really are the aggressor. You know, I've been in situations as, as a child with other kids or with my siblings and uh, where I'm not the aggressor, they're the aggressor, but whoever gets to mama first, whoever gets their story told first, hey, <laughs> that's that's the one that's right. So it's all about who calls the police first, who gets their story told first a lot of times. So we can't just say she was a victim because she called the police. We don't know that. Now, the video, like I said, shows, the full video shows her lunging at the young girl with a knife. The police uh, shot her four times. And I want to address that for the, the shooting four times also later. Um, he did the right thing. Now, a life could have been taken. He had to take a life to save a life. You know, we don't know if uh, the stab wound would have killed the young girl. We don't know. It could have, could have not. We don't know. But who wants to take that chance? So he had to take a life to save a life. He did the right thing. Now, LeBron came out with a tweet directed towards the officer. And the tweet said, you're next. Now, many people, including myself, took it as he was alluding to what just happened to Chavin, Officer Chavin, Derek Chavin. He was convicted on all counts. So I guess that was alluding to now you're next. We're gonna you you're gonna meet the same fate. Now, when I say you gotta be slow to anger, slow to speak, quick to read, quick to listen, this is a prime example. You know, uh, it doesn't matter how much money you got, how much fame you got. Nobody's ab above reproach. Nobody's above critique. LeBron was wrong. He was dead wrong. He deleted the tweet, but he was wrong. He reacted emotionally. He reacted too fast. He didn't have all the facts. He looked at the edited version of the video and sent out this tweet. He was wrong. Um... The officer, I support the officer. He did the right thing. And let me tell you, if somebody's lunging at me with a knife, uh, we can take the officer out of it. If my wife is there and she has a gun, and somebody's lunging at me with a knife and I don't have a weapon, she better unload some bullets in that in that joker. Take his life. Don't don't see what's gonna happen if I get stabbed or if I can survive the stab wound. Don't, don't even gamble like that. Take his life. So the officer did the right thing. Uh, I saw Jeezy make an IG post stating, this is the time where we gotta, you gotta use the taser. <laughs> Man, that, that's, that's silly. Who, well, on, on, two, on two levels that's silly. Who uh, thinks of pulling a taser when things are happening in real time, you see a young lady lunging at someone with a knife in real time. This isn't something we can stop and rewind or put in slow motion. This is real time. Not only that, who's to say the taser is going to have an effect on her and it's going to stop her from going into full motion and actually stabbing and potentially killing the young girl? We've seen situations where the taser has no effect on people. We've seen that many times. And um, so we, we can't say use the taser. No, use deadly force. She was attempting to stab that young girl. You have to use deadly force to stop that. Now, going back to the officer shooting four times. About a week or two ago, I made a video about the, uh, the, the female officer that accidentally pulled her weapon instead of the taser. And I said in that video, I stated, this was an accident for two reasons. She only shot one time and officers are not trained to shoot one time. They're trained to shoot until the threat is immobilized. Not only that, 
you could hear her panic on the video. You could hear her voice panicking and, and it surprised her. She was surprised herself. So going back to this situation, the officer shot four times. He meant to pull his gun. He shot four times because that's the way officers are trained. They're gonna shoot until the threat is immobilized because you can shoot someone in the leg and they still can be a threat. You can shoot someone in, in the thigh, in the arm, they can still be a threat. They're not trained to shoot in the head. They're not trained to shoot in the leg. They're not trained to shoot one time. They're trained to shoot the torso. That's the biggest target, the torso. And a lot of these people that these woke, these fake woke people that have all these suggestions have never, have never shot a gun in a hostile situation. They go to the gun range and shoot but they've never had a gun shot back at them. So you don't know how you would react. It's cool going to the gun range and shooting. Now, how you deal with something when bullets are coming back at you, that's a whole different story. When you dealing with a situation where you gotta save someone's life or you're trying to save your life, you don't know how you, can, you will react until you're in that situation. So, but the officer did the right thing. Um, and I wanna send a message to people like LeBron and Jeezy. <clears throat> and I'm a supporter of Jeezy's work. And I'm a supporter of LeBron as a basketball player. But I can separate the talent from the man. And this isn't uh, so this isn't a personal shot. This is just facts. Uh, they want you to take the position of being the victim. Woe is me. <clears throat> right? That's what they sell you. To be the victim to beg, uh, you're under underprivileged, you know, you're, you're being mistreated. That's what they sell you, right? Jeezy and LeBron are from the hood, grew up in the hood. LeBron's mom was a drug addict and a prostitute. This is public knowledge. Jeezy's mom was a drug addict public knowledge and if you know female drug addicts they will sell a little something to get what they want and they will suck a little something to get what they want from drugs so it is what it is my point being these guys made it to the highest level in music and sports coming from the ghetto with drug addict mothers no fathers involved drug addict mothers the odds, the odds you have to beat to get to that level. So why are they selling you victimhood when they beat the odds? Why don't they tell you, this is how you can get to where I'm at? Why don't they sell that? They don't. They sell you victimhood. Don't fall for the okie doke. And I'm going to tell you how they got to where they, they got to. It's simple. Jeezy won't tell you this. LeBron won't tell you this. Because it's, it's, uh, it's too straightforward. It's tough love. It's holding you accountable. This is how they got to where they got. Focus and discipline. Simple. When Jeezy allegedly got out the drug game, he got focused on music, dedicated himself to music, got signed by Def Jam, reached the highest, reached the highest level, got a Grammy. LeBron did succumb to the pressures of the hood, didn't do drugs. Uh, I don't even think he drank any alcohol in high school, anything. He didn't succumb to it, didn't fall victim to it. Discipline and focus. He knew what he wanted, stayed away from certain things, got to the highest level. His guys in the hood with just as much talent as LeBron or more that did not get to his level because they were unfocused. I know guys that went to the penitentiary, gang banging, robbing, selling dope, murdering, that had talent. The only difference between them and LeBron, LeBron was focused and disciplined. They were not. Simple. They won't tell you that though. They won't tell you that. They won't put that on you. They won't, they won't uh, hold your feet to the fire to be disciplined and challenge you to be disciplined and focused. They'll sell you victimhood. And I'm telling you, don't fall for it. 
you know, we can get caught up because it's a it's a wonderful feeling, man. When people feel sorry for you, it's a sensation that comes over you to be coddled and, and uh, be held, nurtured, and uh, babied. You know, but you you gotta really snap out of that and don't let people put you in that box. Um, a couple of times, I even had to tell my wife, "Hey, I'm not a victim." Because of stuff, uh, you know, I've been through uh, with court battles, family court situations. Couldn't see my kids. Kids kept away from me. Different things I've been through. And I have to stop her from feeling sorry for me. Not not just stopping her, but I can't let that stuff sink inside my, sink into my, my head and my being, my spirit. Where I take on this victim role. So I'm quick to tell her, hey, I ain't a victim. I'm a victor. I'm an overcomer. So you got to you gotta be careful falling into that, man, being rocked to sleep in that way. I'm telling you, do not fall for it. Uh, the officer is in the right. It's a shame. It's, it's a pity that the young girl died. But it had to happen. She was lunging at another girl with a knife and uh, had to take her out, unfortunately. But a life was potentially saved also. And hopefully uh, the people that witnessed that can learn from it and uh, they grow from it. And hopefully the, the young ladies that was in altercation stay out of situations like that and it changes their life for the positive. Um, but I saw, ending on this note, I saw men there. So, like I said, I saw a man kick the girl in the head. <clears throat> Unacceptable. I saw men not breaking it up. I've been in situations where women are about to fight and man, I can't just stand by and watch it. I break it up. I don't even have to know the women. I either need, I either need to leave or I need to break it up. But I'm not sitting around watching girls or women fight. And some guys get off on that. Uh, I don't get it. It's not my thing. But uh, I don't know. I, I don't get it. So uh, unacceptable. Uh, poor example of men in that video. And so, uh, yeah, don't fall for the okie doke. This is not a situation where uh, the police abuse their power. No. And I'm telling you, man, the honorable thing would be for that young lady whose life was saved to come out publicly and thank that officer for saving her life. She probably won't do it because, once again, victimhood sells and she probably has people in her ear, uh, her herself being an adolescent, have people in her ear. You know, taking having her take on the role of not you know speaking up and being the victim, and uh, but the honorable thing would be for her and her parents to publicly publicly thank that officer for saving her life. That's the righteous thing to do. So, and then I, that's it. That's all I got, folks. Peace.